Hey guys, so a couple hours ago, Biden announced that he was going to drop out of the presidential race, and I really wasn't going to say much of anything about this until I saw two clips online. One was of Rachel Maddow, and the other one was uh, Van Jones. I will say this, though, that amongst my friends, I predicted this was going to happen a couple of days after the debate, and I actually made a bet. Originally, the bet was for a dollar just for fun. And then the person I made the bet with said, why don't you bet more? And I'm like, all right, we'll do $20. I think she would have been willing to do 100 But I just stuck with 20 because I'm kind of broke and I know that it wasn't a guarantee. But guess what? I'm getting $20 now. All right. So I'm watching this and I see Van Jones. He's crying up and he's like... <gasps> We're speaking of Biden, uh, we, he served so much. He served. We love this man. This, this Negro was crying. He was crying over, crying over Biden like Biden is his uncle. Rachel Maddow was doing something similar, but a, with, a, with a little bit more dignity. So having more dignity than Van Jones really isn't a, a high bar to, to cross so good for her. But this is why this kind of bugs me. Now, here's the thing, guys. If they were doing their jobs. They being the reporters, several things would have happened. One, we we're, we're not suffering from a Mandela effect. We were all under kind of the impression that Biden was going to do four years and that he was just going to be a one termer. And that was it. That was not the Mandela effect that was heavily implied. But instead, what's happened is this man clearly I can't say clearly. Look, I'm not a neuroscientist. I'm not a psychiatrist. But it seems pretty apparent that he's had some type of cognitive decline since then, right? And even the rates in which he addresses the public, the rates in which he addresses his cabinet, these reporters, they observe these things. They measure it. They, they speak to staff within the White House. They know these things. They know things that we don't know because they build these relationships. But instead of actually reporting these things, instead of actually addressing these things, what they allowed is they allowed this man to continue running until it became impossible to ignore, until he's on a stage being watched by millions of people in the world saying that we defeated Medicare. They let that happen. They didn't address it. They, they let that happen. And they know what was happening because they love to suck up the power. And then with Trump... What we have is a man who's convicted of 34 felonies and by in a civil case was convicted of rape. Do they bring that up? We have a man who was fired upon by a rifle that his party will defend tooth and nail. But the other party, the Democrats, have tried to put restrictions and bans on it. And what do they do? They blame the party that was actually trying to restrict the use of the rifle. Right? Do the reporters point that out? Absolutely not. Not about as often as they report, point out the fact that he's a rapist and a convicted felon. They're not doing their job. So here's the thing, guys. These people, if you're a congressman, every two years, a congressperson every two years. If you're a senator every six years, president every four years, you come to us and you say, can I serve you? That's what they're doing. They're coming to us and asking, can they serve us, right? And they should, even after they get elected, every day they should pr have to prove to us that they are worthy of serving us, that they're, that they're worthy of, of being in control, being at the helm, helm, the will metaphors that they deserve controlling the most powerful country on the planet to have say so in the use of the most powerful military that this planet's ever seen and the people who should be holding them accountable the reporters they're not instead they're kissing their asses so here we go we wouldn't be in this position if we didn't treat the politicians like they're some type of deities on top of a mountain that should be honored. They're not. They're servants to us. Civil servants. Let me be clear. Civil servants. The history of our country, I shouldn't throw the term servant around without context. And civil servants. But they're supposed to be serving us. Um, the other thing, guys, is this. 
more than likely, and here's my prediction, I think Kamala Harris is going to be the Democrats' presidential candidate. Uh, there's several reasons why I think that. One is because it has to do with fi uh, campaign finance laws. Right now, that the uh, the Biden campaign has about $100 million, and they can't access that. Or The only person who, with these finance laws, can have that $100 million directly is Kamala Harris. There's other ways that another candidate could get it, but it would have to involve going through a a, uh, a political action committee, and it gets muddled. And the other thing is that the, the Democrats rely heavily on women and people of color, and it would look bad if they ignored the VP who is a woman and a person of color. Now, here's the thing. Kamala Harris, she's been VP for four years. She was a senator before that, and she was attorney general before that. So why not? Hopefully that now that she's actually, if she's asked to stand up, everything she say won't be a word salad. I kind of think when she was VP, she was often kind of phoning things in. But the fact that she was a prosecuting attorney and the fact that this, I think that she's, she's much more capable than she showed us to be. Now, on the other side, let me point this out. The VP on their side, two years in the Senate and everything that he's gotten in life, his first jobs, his his uh, his seat in the Senate, even the VP slot, it's because of a a rich uh, German billionaire named Peter Thiel, who's essentially a fascist. That's basically it. Remember this guy called uh, Donald Trump American Hitler, and then and then just decided to be his VP because what's integrity? So what you're going to keep hearing, guys, is from the Republicans towards the uh, Democrats and Harris, if she is the uh, if she is is running and you're already hearing it, they're going to keep saying D.E.I., D.E.I., D.E.I. It's going to be their pundits. It's going to be Republican uh, surrogates, I guess you'll say. D-E-I, 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 just like you kept hearing CRT, 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 just like you kept hearing woke, 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 because they are really leaning into white grievance, the racist and misogynist. You're going to keep hearing because, well, the problem is they can't say the N word, at least not in polite company out in the open. Now, rest assured, behind closed doors, when they don't think anybody's hearing, they drop the N-word more than a rapper. But, you know, maybe that's it. Maybe we should just let them say what they want to say. They say, we should get together, uh, my fellow black people, and we should just get and say, just say it with us. Just say nig. nig. We know you want to say it. Just say nig.